Hey everyone, it's Jim T. Graham and Jason Cole, and you've reached the RC Group's podcast slash YouTube hangout. What's going on, JC? What, what? How's it going, man? Going good. Everyone, so, it's Jim. Hey, it's Jim T. right there live. I'm live double. Double live. <laughs> Isn't that a Ted Nugent uh, album, I believe? Oh, wow. That's uh, right over my head. 1976, right there. <laughs> so everyone, let's talk about real quick what's going on in the RC world. First of all, it's cold. Uh, it sort of snowed last night. Just <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's January still. I said we got a whole other month of this too. I, I was just outside, and um, it's it's not too bad. The sun's shining, and it's pretty. But I'm sure no one's at the airfield today. No, yeah, it's one of those. Let's think about flying and maybe do a simulator, or build something kind of day. Hey, let's, month. <laughs> let's start off with this right now. We lost a good friend to the RC community in Nashville, and a general Balsa Balsa Bob is what they call him. Um, Bob Patterson is his name. Bob flew. Jason, did you? See, I, he flew uh, big aircraft in World War II, and they were, they were talking about it in that thread. Did you see that? Uh, no, I I didn't follow all the way down. I guess maybe, maybe I'll find it because he was somebody brought just the other day the plane that he used to fly uh, to the field, and so he was telling them all the secrets about this airplane. Like when you deployed the brakes, it would make this whistling sound. Hmm. And they actually had those on that airplane. But Bob uh, was always there at the field every day. In fact, um, a long, long time ago, I can still remember when I went across the street to get that reference. Jason. That's a song reference. I went across the street to a garage sale and I'd never flown RC, but I always wanted to. But as a kid, it seemed expensive and I didn't know how to get into it. And uh, There was a big airplane. It was a 60 size Sagittarius from Italy trainer, the fiber. And uh, paid five bucks for it. I took it to the field. Uh, many people thought that I was lost, perhaps there to sell drugs. They Who's weren't sure. Hippie? Yeah. Or they're and like, Willie's here? What? So oh, I met not Willie Nelson. Jason, I met, well, back then I was just a <laughs> liar. I met the president, Richard Rust, who happened to be in the parking lot. And he said, I'm sure somebody here will help you. And uh, Bob Patterson was the first guy to say, let me take a look at that airplane. And, um, he and I, every day, he would go, you know what you need? You need some servos. So then <laughs> I'd go to uh, that hobby store in Brentwood and get what I need and put them in. I had no idea what I was doing. And then he would go, you got to turn those around or you got to put this clevis here. And so every day I would get, and I had a, I think I was at the time working for, where was I working? Either it was at the record label. I don't know. But at lunch, I would go see him. Then at night, I would work on it took me a month to get that airplane to the point where he said, I think you're ready to fly. So Bryce Custer, uh, who we've all met on the podcast was the guy teaching me to fly. And, uh, the, the thing that I'll always remember, and, and I think this has a lot to do with what Bob did and what we have to do as modelers is, um, he got me all the way to this point. I personally could not believe that something that I built in the basement would actually be able to fly in the sky. <laughs> in right? sustained flight, yes. It's unbelievable to think that you would be able to build such a device. And then um, it took off. And of course, Bryce was at the controls on the Maiden. And it was flying. And I remember this feeling. It was almost like my dad never let me like leave the property. And uh, I went to my grandpa's house when I was like 13. And he had a big motorcycle, 700 Honda. He said, Jimmy, you can go anywhere you want as long as you're back in an hour. And I remember riding in the these this one lane road with peanut fields on both sides of me, thinking how free I felt, that I'd never felt that free ever in my whole life and that I needed more of this feeling. And when I flew that airplane for the first time, that was, man, I give myself chills. That was the same feeling I got when I saw this thing that I put together take flight and actually come back and land on the runway. Yeah, buddy. And so Good Bob, memory. Bob always had a plane in his truck for beginners to fly. There was always one there. He was always ready to put somebody on the buddy box. He always had all the tools any man would ever need. If you forgot something, Bob probably had it. And, uh, you know, he started out as a full scale aviator in world war two. And this is what he did for the whole time. I've been at that field, Jason, I can't even, most of the time Bob would be there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, just about every time, right? Like any time yeah. you go out there. I mean, that's the dream, right? You want to retire and then just go to the model airplane field every day and enjoy it. And um, always there to help. And so he's gone. I mean, we get our time. 
and we get to figure out what we're going to do with that time. And then one day, like our lithium polymer batteries or our airframes, uh, there is an expiration date. And Bob met his expiration date and he filled it up by helping people and doing what he loved. He also loved to tell a good joke and or possibly a bad joke or slash an improper joke. <laughs> so uh, always fun. And we're sure going to miss him. It will not be the same without him. I did, Jason, when we were there on Polar Bear Day, Yeah, he was sitting in his truck and it was obvious that he was not up to par. And so I made a point to see him before, right when I got there. And then when I left, I thought, man, I'm going to go talk to him one more time. And uh, I did. And that was the last time I got to talk to him. Yep. Yep. He was a good guy. He, it's definitely going to be different around the, the field, you know. And when you lose, same. you lose guys like Bob, who's a local legend. Then you lose guys like Joe Ambrose, uh, who took Horizon to where it is today, which is probably one of the top hobby companies in the world. And, um, and then Dave Matthewson and all these people, I personally, I guess I've lived long enough to see this happen. I feel like, what are we going to do without these movers and shakers in our industry now? And uh, really what it means is it's up to us. I mean, we can go fly tomorrow and come home and watch the game and whatever. But uh, if we want to keep pushing things forward in this generation of digital uh, games and things like that. We, it's up to us to be the Dave Matthewsons and the Bobs. And yeah, that's what Gary said that in the chat. He said, pass it on, you know, so the hobby will survive, right? Keep it, keep it going. Right. So if there's anything we take away from Bob, it's, it's live the good life and be sure to share uh, our love with everyone else to keep it going. That's right. That's so right. So I'm going to go to YouTube right now so I can see the live chat. There I am. I'm, I look like a horse in this picture with my mouth open. Jason Cole, what have you done this week? I know this morning you were getting gas. I was getting gas, dropping some stuff off. But, man, I've been, you know, enjoying the warm weather inside of my house with the Tiny Whoop. And I picked up one of these things. Anybody know what this is? Can you it's tell a me this? It's a balloon. No, no, no. Let me, it's uh, a gate. Take, let me take this Velcro strip off. And then I'll take this Velcro strip off. Boom! Uh, okay, it is the ultimate tiny whoop tunnel. Flying and it's, tunnel. That's like a kid's toy. I think I have it. One is. Of those. Yeah, it's like 20 bucks on Amazon, or you can sometimes find them for five bucks. Yeah, cat tunnels, kids crawl through them, but they're so much fun to fly through with your tiny whoops and micro drones. So I got, I got one of those, and then I got like four of the official kind of like tiny whoop gates to like set up around the house, make fun tracks. So awesome. I've you been having a good time. Stuff? What was that? Where'd you get all that stuff? Uh, I got this one from Tiny Whoops website. They sell okay. them directly. And then I ordered the tunnel off Amazon. And it's just kind of like, you know, you can only do so much with chairs and bar stools. So it's like get some real gates and set up some tracks, you know. So. Speaking of cats, uh, sidebar story. Um, I... By the way, we'll look at it in just a minute. I, I almost feel like I'm bragging, but at the same time, I, we talked about it already. So I did get my truck. I have, I mean, it only took 20 years of, uh, I'm not kidding you, Jason. I had the screenshot of C10s on my computer for years. And I thought, I know. Oh, I'm never going to get this thing. Uh, it is sitting, I just got out of it uh, from exercising. And uh, so anyway, this morning I had a dream uh, for this uh, keychain for my truck. Mm -hmm. So I last night I got the 1964 license plate that's red, and then I figured out the way I wanted to make my leather, and uh, I made this thing, and so now it hangs. I don't know if you've ever been in a 65 C10, but the keys will hang over the paint and rattle, and so I made this so the keys won't do that. But the point of my story, Jason, is that my cat watched me sew that. So this cat, mm -hmm. he's part sweet and part sour. And uh, he was sitting in front of me or sitting on the floor and you could see he was just watch me. sew the whole thing. And then when I took it off to cut the strings, that cat walked over and actuated the accelerator pedal <laughs> and, and ran the sewing machine. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah. Right through your hand, right? Crazy. Oh, okay. So what are we going to talk about today? We actually have many things. We have uh, dropped multiple reviews that we're going to take a look at and discuss. Uh, it looks like my review dropped. Is that true? Your review dropped? No. I saw a banner that had 50 views. Okay, maybe not. Anyway, Jason's in charge of that. 
We have some RC news to go over and we'll take a look at my new little red truck. Uh, they say it has 400 horsepower. I don't know. It does sound like a dragster. Jason has not ridden in it yet, but Jason, I did order the top. Um, I don't know if they've started making it yet so that we would be able to put airplanes in the back and go somewhere. There you like go. Or something. Yeah, buddy. So let's kick it off. Unless there's something you need to say in general, Jason. No, I just want to congratulate you for, you know, fulfilling your dream. You've got the truck. It exists. It's in your driveway right now. I almost feel guilty because it's so nice. Uh, but uh, it was a it was a culmination of hope. Uh, I did hide money away in various ways uh, for a while, and then also luck. I got lucky as well. Yeah, I, I saw the bed of your truck looks so nice. I was like, man, I would just rhino line that whole thing so you could actually use it. <laughs> well, the uh, so, well, we'll talk about it. The man. first time you right. put a washing machine up in the back of that thing and scrape it across the wood. <laughs> I literally put washing machines in my truck. Did I tell you that? No. Yeah, I picked up two a washing and dryer machine like uh, two weeks ago. Okay. And when I picked this truck up, I thought, would I put it? <laughs> yeah, would I do this? this truck? No, no, you would not. I don't know. That's funny. Well, let's jump over the RC news first. Before we do that, let's say hello to our live viewers. Hello, live viewers. Um, it's Nick One. I just saw this go by. Nick won three or four, three of five prizes at his fly-in last week, including a crack pits BNF. Awesome. We have currently on the live chat, Steve Wattenberg, what Wattenberg, Gary Mount, uh, STUD, STU Tiefen, uh, got three flights in before work, Gary Mount, Boone 870, uh, simulator and RC groups hangout day for me against the weather's bad and he's tucking it in, uh, and more and more and more. What's up, Ron Chambers and Ethan and hello. And uh, so uh, just saying hello to everyone. Uh, STU Tiefen, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, says that, uh, no, RC Group says he's super pumped about the Timber X Carbon Z stuff, just doesn't get flown as much for me. Ah, I agree. Uh, while a big plane is good, those, that little uh, like bike that I just reviewed is awesome. Yeah. So before we jump into the review situation, Let's go look at the news on rcgroups.com. Can we start with the Timber X? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. No, I, I want to. I want to. That's, that's, that's part of the news. Okay. But I mean, you know, it came out. Uh, I guess last Thursday, whatever. But I just, I just got to say, it's probably one of the most exciting airplanes and releases that I've seen in a long time. I don't know why. It's just something about it just speaks to me, and it just is like calling my name. It's like Jason, fly me. And I'm so like, oh, I want to fly you so bad. This uh, is the Gary Wright plane. Yeah, so Timber X. So it's it's like a Timber. It's essentially roughly the same size as the previous Timber. Um, in fact, the old original wing will fit and work on this fuselage. But what they've done, you've got giant flaps. They've enlarged the control surfaces. Still got the bush wheels. It's like a Timber. You can fly it slow. You can do stall kind of stuff with it. But it's also very powerful, very aerobatic, 3D capable. So it just it just seems like it's incredibly versatile. It's got optional floats you can get. You can just do so much with that one airplane. 250 bucks, I think it is, for the Bind and Fly Basic. That is a great price. Great price. I mean, it just looks like it's going to be fantastic fun to fly. And let me say, if you don't know, here comes my dog. He just opened the door. Hey, uh, right here. Gary didn't invent 3d but he was a pioneer of 3d has been doing this for years and uh big kudos to gary for bringing an airplane out that so many people are excited about yeah i mean i think they hit it up talk i know some people are like waiting and like kind of holding hope out for a carbon z timber and that could you know that could come um because they have that wooden you know timber but a carbon z foam one would be kind of cool too but i'm just I, I can't, I don't know, super excited. I'm I'm just going out of my mind. I'm like, this thing is awesome. And it even has lights. Yeah, it's kind of the right size. It's going to fit in your car in one piece. For most and SUVs. Check it out. It's, it's almost like the Carbon Z Cub, and it even has that uh, actuated landing gear, like I spent so much money to put on my Carbon Z. Spring loaded, yep. Yep, 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 yep. I'll have to see how those tires are. Normally, the tires aren't very good. I bet $1,000 um, David Payne is the inverted plane. 
Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Good old DP. So I was actually watching Horizon's announcement of this, and David Payne was on, and he was like, he saw me jump in, I guess. Huh? And he was like, Jason Cole, you need this airplane. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> I would awesome. like it. It's funny when the internet talks back to you. It's crazy. Yeah. And they're shipping like today, tomorrow, this week. Like they're starting shipping out from California. So they got their container or more than one container, hopefully, full of these things. So. They should be so, getting in people's hands very soon. So two fifty nine, eh? Two, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's go look. So this post was actually made by Jason Merkel. Two forty nine. Two forty nine. I'm a big fan of Jason. Uh, great guy, and super sharp. And so I saw that he initially made the post, and I said, "Hey, man, uh, let me let me spruce that up a little bit for you, and and put it through the Jim T. Graham recipe." And so here's some photos of this guy. I do like flaps. You could put crow on here if you had the appropriate radio. Yep. You could do so much and they're huge. It's got to be really effective. Jason, maybe this is just a purchase. It will. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'm holding the hope out. Uh, and there's an AS3X, I'm sure, in there helping you be even better. I love that there's lights on it. Yeah. 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 And if it was really cool, they'd have uh, tubes in there to slide your LEDs. Here they are planting corn. Well, let's, what was my question? Oh, the features. Uh, short takeoff, enlarged oversized control, so you can land this on grass or whatever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, also uh, has floats, six durable, uh, high torque servos, 3S, 4S compatible, so much like my little pits, it would probably haul buttocks. Yep. Shock absorbing landing gear, which is uh, cool and needed as long as it functions well, but it's Horizon, so I'm sure it does. Functional factory installed LED, lightweight, durable, optional use leading edge slats. So that would allow you just to slow it down a little bit and get even uh, uh, slower while you're doing your 3D maneuvers. Optional EDO style floats. So that's something I've never heard before. Go back up a little bit. Um, what is EDO style floats? Does anybody know in the live chat? I don't think I've ever heard that name referenced ever. I agree, uh, Nick. There should always be channels internally to just slide in your LED strips. And then if you're really cool, you design the plane so the LED, the internal LED strip would then illuminate the whole damn bird, you know, and it would be a separate kit that you'd just buy. So we do have some more videos up here. We have the video in, but you could also go to Horizon through our link and uh, see them talking about it. Super cool. And a thread is giant already on this thing. Well, let's I mean, see. I was just saying to Jason, lots of replies. I'm really uh, giving you a, what are you talking about? 17,000 views. And that's not a week old, right? No. Yeah. It said January 16th. Wow. It's popular. Does that tell What's you something? What's going on? Jason 3D, the... 3D was hot 20 years ago. No, 16 ah. years ago. Uh, wait, 18 years, 18 years ago. How the heck is this thing taking everyone by storm? Yeah, I mean, it's like that. It really tells you something, right? You can see how popular it is, and there's what? probably multiple threads on it too, so it could even be higher than that. But oh, we have it. We have an answer. Mark Dribble, EDO is a float plane company, so it's scale. Wow. That's good to know. Interesting. Wow. Hey everyone, rcgroups.com looked at it yesterday. One point two million unique users in the last thirty days. I was having a discussion with someone talking about how. Our user base is dwindling, and I'm like, bro, 1.2. And Jason, we've been running at this number for literally years now, mm -hmm. and um, I was I was surprised and very happy. And then if you scroll down to the bottom, let's go see what we got going on. 22 active, 22,000 active users, and then forum spy. I am totally to our own horn here. So you can go to forum spy and see threads as they're being posted, it's like a dang ticker tape machine. Uh, from uh, the movies and then also my favorite is user map because oftentimes people say Jim do you have users not from America and you can see that Europe is a heavy-duty machine as far as people coming in what's mm -hmm. the craziest place there's like got, eight guys in Australia that fly that's it now our New Zealand people uh, aren't they are they the craziest or are Australian people the craziest well, you know there, there's this war of Australians New Zealand if you didn't know I don't want to general. I don't like each other. Oh, I, right. I do. New Zealand I do. people get mad if you think they're from Australia, right? <laughs> but, man, I'm jealous of their flying sites, especially the slopers. They've got out there in New Zealand, beautiful mountains, crazy scenery. I 
I do like Flight of the Concords if you've ever seen. I wouldn't that. be mad to live there right now. Uh, All right, so some news: drone saves elderly man's life. Hold on, hold on. We got some live chat coming in. Gary, uh, you may or may not know this, but I was on the front line of 3D and uh, was blamed as the primary reason for the hobby to uh, totally blow up. You're such a rebel, man. You're such a rebel. Back then, if you were for 3D, people would literally, like, in public that didn't know you would give you trouble. Yeah. No, you're going to ruin the hobby, man. Yeah. Uh, that's how, flying that's how, 3D planes over the runway. That's how I got my start in the hobby, uh, profile planes. Which uh, I'm curious to see how Gary's plane flies. I guarantee. Well, I don't know. We'll find out. It'll definitely be at Nashboro, one way or the other. I'll oh, yeah. oh yeah. So uh, tell me about this, Jason. How does a uh, so this is just one of those you, you hear these stories about drones shutting down airports and stupid stuff, but this is good stuff, right? So this was uh, earlier in the, earlier in the month, like January eighth, I believe, um, down in Texas, an elderly man was missing. They were searching for him, couldn't find him. Uh, they busted out a drone with a thermal camera like you see there. Here's a video of it. And the drone is able to cover a lot of ground, you know, check the fields. And they end up spotting him out in the field sitting down. And it's like four foot tall grass. Like there's no way you would see him from the road. He's not uh, far from a house there. So you can see that white dot in the middle of the screen there. That's right. him. But you couldn't see him from the road, you know, right there. There's no way you'd see him passing by. So the drone was able to like, oh, psh, there he is, ding, bingo. They got emergency services out to him, got him to the hospital. He was in stable condition. So they ended up saving that dude's life, man. Wow. That's good for everybody. Now, oh, he Jim, you just got burned so hard. I don't know why. I mean, he's actually, Jim's a good flyer. Yeah, but you know what, Nick? <laughs> uh Nick says, uh, you were so early in 3D, why aren't you better at it? So um, basically, I founded the Profile Brotherhood, which was the first real 3D group of guys. And uh, I started hosting my Nashville event. And I quickly realized that I am at best a mediocre pilot almost all the time. I'm never great. Yeah, so, I don't agree with that. The last times I've been watching you fly, especially like drones and other airplanes, you've been killing it. And I'm like, oh, he's just masquerading. He just wants to have that. I'm just a normal pilot, hmm. but no, it's better than that. Well, um, Nick, I tell you what I might do is I might have to buy this uh, new airplane. And then uh, I think the real trick into getting good at whatever it is you want to do, uh, FPV, 3D, or whatever, is to get a single a unit and then just learn it, and then you know the boundaries. And that's another issue with being a reviewer, which you would know, Nick, is. Uh, uh, you switch airplanes and when you're a reviewer so much that you never really get to know it very well because you're already on to the next one. Mm -hmm. Unless you're happen. Jason Cole. Now, Jason, I've thought about this before. Uh, I'll stop this for a second because I really want – I think this is an important topic. I've often thought that exact thing, which I just said, that you, you – it's like pistols. My dad always said, beware of the man with one gun because he knows exactly how to shoot it. Yeah. Guy has 100 guns. He's probably not that great. Um, but you, Jason, you literally can take any plane and fly it to death. And my question is, how, where do you think that is based on? Is that from flying so much in the early days of your career? It could be. I mean, it's just it, it's something I love with all my heart. Right. I love flying. I love doing this. And with that enjoyment just comes time spent doing it. Right. It's just practice. And then I think Hobby Lobby helped a lot with that. I had to fly for the marketing videos for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of aircraft. So show passes low and yeah. slow. And, so you had to like, and most of the time they were made in flights of the airplanes and we're shooting the marketing video for it. And you just and have you can't to, crash it. yeah, you can't crash it, but you got to, you know, you're trying to show it off and show what it can do. And um, it's just, you know, it's just having fun really, but practice is key. And just the more you do it, the better you get at it. SDU says that he flies five days a week. So I'll tell you this. When I first started flying, when I really got the bug, I bought a profile plane at a, at a uh, swap meet, and then I got a Morris knife. Mm -hmm. And I every day I would have it charged, and that's back in the glow days, and uh, it would have fuel in it, and it lived in my truck. I charged it in my truck. It stayed in my truck. And on my way to, at that time, I was working for CMT. Um, I would stop at the field on the way to work, and do one tank of gas. And I did it every day 
And that's probably the best I ever got at doing 3D with that Morris knife. Yeah. Yeah. And then I can attest to practice, like, I was never a great drone racer. And then so we were doing these tiny whoop things, and I would go to a couple of these indoors, and then two or three of the guys would just totally kick my butt. Like, I'm like, I can't even race. Like, I'm just going to have fun trying to get through the gates without crashing. I can't even, like, race. And then I started flying in my home and practicing and shooting gates and chairs and all this stuff. And I just did it, run five, six, 10, 20 batteries every day. And then all of a sudden you're really fast and you're like, oh, I, maybe I can race. You know, they still beat me, but I like, I'm actually a contender with those same guys now. And it's just like you put in the time and you can see the results pretty instantly. One thing that happened to me that is kind of weird. Um, it's, it's almost weird to say it. Um, I started working for Hobby Lobby. I was already Billy Hell, and so I, I got the Profile Brotherhood up and rolling. And I would go places, and somehow people assumed that I was flying on the chip hide level just because I was everywhere. And that was intimidating to me because I obviously will never fly like chip hide. And uh, and then they want me to fly their eight thousand dollar airplane, and I never felt comfortable <laughs> doing that. And yeah. then I, and then uh, I started uh, shying away from it, and then I just never shied back. I'm more of a PR marketing guy than a, uh, a expert uh, pilot type of guy. I think. No, you're both. I 3D. Well. I'm a 3D master of PR and marketing. That's how I use it. <laughs> okay, back. Although I always thought about that, Jason. So one more question for you, though, Jason. Um, you don't get to fly every day now, but do you feel that all that those hours spent like flying for Hobby Lobby has translated into your ability to, to fly anything you really want at this point in the game? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's like riding a bike. Like I can fly anything that exists, but to, to, there's difference between just flying something and then flying something well. And that's where the difference is. Like I, 3D skills, I haven't done 3D, you know, every once in a while if you get a review plane or something so my 3d skills are so so rusty um i can hover maybe do a rolling harrier but like i just never progressed past like some of those basic maneuvers and i'm you know if i picked one up right now i would have to spend you know weeks and weeks and weeks getting all of that back and you know just to try to you know be able to compete not really compete but just to do that 3d aerobatics kind of well it's right. going to take some time you can kind of that your way through a little bit of it, but you're going to have to put in some more time, even if after you've done it for years. Well, uh, STU says he does scale war warbird flying. So let's take a look at make this a little bit bigger for everybody. Jason, why don't you speak on this? This is the Horizon Hobby Hangar 9 P47D Thunderbolt. So this is their 20cc size. Warbird, you can put a gas engine in it. You can put an electric motor in it. So this so was Mr. McDougal, longtime RC Groups reviewer. Yeah, let's stop here and say what uh, a great thing McDougal has been, not only for RC Groups, but for the hobby in general. He has been doing reviews for us probably before my time and uh, always does a great job. Not to mention, what a great guy. Definitely. Definitely a good guy. So he built this one with electric power. It's got the the, the BL60. 67 uh, inch wingspan. It's it weighs airplane. 11 to 13 pounds. Yep, 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 yep. And he seems to really like it. Um, there's some cool, like, optional things you can do with the struts. Comes with sprung landing gear stock. But I mean, this is like, look, go back up the price, wasn't it? Like $299. Three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. So four hundred dollars for a giant, you know, scale ARF Warbird. It's pretty fantastic price. Let's go see it built. So there it is. It has rivet lines and all that. No wear or tear. Which lots of wonderful. details. Lots of parts. Talon ninety ESC. So this is, uh, for the guys out there that are watching this that haven't built an ARF before. Maybe all you've done is ready to fly or bind and fly aircraft or drones or something. This is this is an almost ready to fly airplane. So there's a lot of work, not as much as building a like kit from scratch, but there's still a lot of work in fitting the parts together, putting it together, installing electronics, servos, control linkages, um, landing gear, wings, you know, all of the parts you have to build and put it together. Um, so it can take, depending on the airplane, it can take you know 14, 20 hours or more. 
Um, I don't think he ever says how much time he spent on this, but it wasn't, you know, a one day kind of build. And then you throw in doing the review, which takes everything. Sometimes you can make the build twice as long. Yeah. Look at that thing. Oh my gosh. I like a P47. I know most people are like P51s, but I, I think P47 is my favorite warbird of that era. Now, would that be a, a jug? A jig part of it. Yep, yep, yep. What do you think your favorite warbird, World War II plane would be, Jim? Oh, man. I don't know. I'd have to think about it. I was never. I, I always considered myself not a warbird guy. Yeah. But, I, but maybe it's my age. I'm starting to like them more. I do like a P-40. Uh, Corsair, I always thought was cool, but I don't know if I'd want to RC such a thing. Yeah. Did I hit the play button? Yeah, he's talking. Mm-hmm. Sexy. It's sexy. It's and good it's looking. It's sexy. big. And it's rolling. This dude fan says, P-51 flies best for me. They do fly great. They're like, pattern planes almost in in some ways and in my day warbirds were notorious for dropping a wing at the drop of a hat and i think we progressed so much in rc plane design that i don't think anything really does they really do have they tweak the airfoils and everything to make them much more manageable and uh, e you know easier to land those kinds of things yeah less stall prone so They've done a really good work in that area, so they, they stick around a whole lot longer in your hangar. They don't get war damage. Well, I'm kind of cruising through here, but be sure and go to RC Groups. You can check out the whole thing, watch the video in uh, real live motion. I got an email yesterday, Jason, from Manny. Hey, Manny, if you're watching this or if anyone knows Manny, thank you, man. Uh, Manny always keeps us in his thoughts as far as uh, what's going on and uh, and I had written him and I said, what you got? You got something new? And so they have new serial 2.4 diversity hot receivers. And these are tiny. In fact, I really had to go hunting to, to find <laughs> it in the photograph. Yeah. I went back and cropped it. And I believe Manny's in this thread. Yeah. So if you're interested in that at all, you can go check that out. There you go. And Manny will talk to you. Uh, let's, uh, okay. Jason flew this. Jason, have you talked about this? Uh, no, that one just came out. A couple By the days way, ago. I just was watching flight test video this morning. What was I doing? I guess I was eating a salad, and I watched a whole video. What a great group of guys! I fully support them. I think they're awesome, and and, and their whole concept and what they do. So good, good ambassadors for the hobby. Yeah, for and, sure. And this airplane is based. That said, I dislike the color scheme. I think flight test is cool, but I don't think it is a color scheme for an airplane. But that's just me and sailplanes. I just don't. It's just not symmetrical. I don't wow, know. Wow, man! I, look at that video back Check there. That's what the, they were talking about in the live chat. That's yep. awesome. Yep, yep, yep. So you can see. I mean, it's got the the flight test logo and their and their name on it. I'm just like ah, for a sailplane, that just doesn't look that great to me. But it's kind of bland. But you can pull them off, do your own stuff. But that's the money shot. That's what this plane is really all about. It is filled with LED lights. And uh, I think maybe Nick posted about it, but somebody created an RC electric switch that you can solder in and install to the existing switch there. And then you can change the light patterns and speed with your radio from the ground while it's flying. Wow, nice. So that's cool. I'm like, ah, it's like $24 maybe. Can make it it I was like, yeah, that's kind of a must have. It'd just be really cool to be able to do that. But for those of you who know the Radian, it's, you know, they've had Radians around forever now. Very good airplanes. It's rudder elevator only for control throttle as well. But um, it handles just like a Radian. It's a little bit heavier. This is quite a bit heavier than the, like the original Radian. And it's, you know, it's still thermals. You can still fly it in competitions if you want. It's just going to need a little bit stronger lift um than the original but it's just filled with all those lights so to me it's more of like a sport night plane um that oh hey by the way it can also thermal and fly like a glider really well too but it's really fun to be night flying and under power and doing crazy loops and rudder rolls and acro and you know just horsing around with it because <laughs> it's 
stupid easy to see with the amount of lights they have in it. It's like there's no way you're getting disoriented. That it's is really not fun to fly. Th that's not a kilt Jason's wearing. That's <laughs> his PJs. I guarantee you. Are those your pajamas? They are my pajamas. Pajama pants. All right. Let me ask this question. Those um, are the uh, dress attire of the winter for me. I'm I'm gonna uh, sidebar this. Up in the left, we see a semi-automatic rifle, and up on the right, we see a samurai sword. Zombie apocalypse occurs. Which one, if you had to choose one, which one are you taking? If I had to choose one, well, I'd have to go with the samurai sword. Me, I wouldn't too. want them to be that as close to me, but it doesn't. You don't run out of sword, right? I can run right. out of bullets, and then that gun is basically useless. And and P.S. I often bring out my samurai sword on the show. I found out that it is from the 1700s. And uh, that's pretty exciting. It's wow. crazy. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so I'm sure it actually was involved in some altercations. All right, we'll jump off this video. Yeah, you, Nick recognizes Flexi Rexy. That's awesome. You can uh, actually see all this once again on RC groups, batteries, and all the things that Jason suggests that you do. Bottom line, if you like night flying, if you like gliding, two thumbs up. Really good airplane for that. Had a blast with it. Still do. Still will. And you can fly it in extremely cold weather. Yeah. It wasn't that cold. Or was it? I don't it was know. it was not awesome. <laughs> well, here's another one of those deals where I have a friend in the hobby named Chris Henson. And uh Chris and I play guitar together. Uh he's been at Nashville a couple of years and we were in a band together, the Nauman brothers and the Septones. And so Chris and I know each other very well. And he pinged me and uh he's a supporter of I think he's running an ad on RC groups. And, but anyway, um, he said, Hey, I got a new bird. If you want to do a story. And I said, send the info, my brother. And so this is all the information from Chris himself with photos of the two trim schemes. That's the Jim Burke trim scheme. Mirko designed that just for Jim. And Chris has the legal rights to reproduce it because mm -hmm. we talked about it at the hangar at Joe Naw and made it, made it. So. Yep. Here's Some of the best. 3d aerobatic planes on the market. And then you can go check them out right here. And I hope to see Chris pretty soon. His band should be getting back down this way. Now, yeah. Jason, did you watch the video? What happens if you fly a drone in an airplane? Did you watch the video of the guys flying the drone in the truck? I did, yeah. And there's so this this article is just kind of like, hey, we're bored. It's kind of winter time. We're not got a lot flying going on. What you know? What about this? And then I was talking with a buddy of mine about it, and he brought it up, and I was like, hmm, I, what would happen? You know, I was like, let's talk about it. So we created the article and. It's it's fun to listen to everybody think they know what would happen, you know, and, and some people might be right, some people might be wrong, but they're adamant that they're right, and then the next guy is adamant that something else is right. So right. it's kind of fun just to have that discussion and, you know, who knows until it's actually tried. And a U-Haul truck isn't the same as a cabin of an airplane, and it might, the air f might respond differently, so, you know, who knows, but... It's kind of one of those things. So if you haven't seen this yet, the scenario is uh, you're hovering a little tiny whoop drone in an airplane, no GPS, and the airplane's on the runway, on the ground, and it goes to take off, you know, while you're hovering with no corrective action from the pilot, what happens? And it's like either the drone acts like nothing's happening and it just moves and stays in the same space uh, in the airplane with the airplane moving or it moves back a little bit as the plane moves forward and then the air kind of equalizes out and then it catches up and, and then, so it moves back slightly here or we, that it just stays in place while the airplane drives forward and then it just slams into the back of the cockpit or the back of the plane. And what they've proven in this shot is that uh, it flies normally if uh, the speed stays the same. Yeah, that is known. We've, we've had lots of videos, people flying in vehicles, I've done that before, you know, 70 miles an hour down the interstate and you're flying a drone inside your car. Um, but so my, what my, the main point for me is a, we know it's not going to stay in place. Um, but a lot of people think that the drone is going to remain in a fixed position relative well, to the ground. Right. Right. So the airplane would be moving. The drone would not be moving. If you were looking at it like an invisible airplane, and the drone would not be moving relative to the ground and the airplane would just, you know, ram into the drone for at the back. So what I'm saying is I don't think that's true. I don't think the drone, and I, I think that video of them flying in the truck 
shows that it's not as if the drone is in GPS mode and locked to that position over the ground and the truck runs into it. It's it moves back, but the air kind of balances out and uh, pressure. You know, it moves. The air moves in the vehicle as the vehicle moves, so it, and it affects the drones flying in the air. And an airplane cabin is going to be different. It's pressurized and they're pumping more air in than is leaking out. And it's it's a whole different environment than a truck. So I don't even think we would see the exact same results that we're seeing in the truck in the airplane cabin. So somebody's really got to go test this in a pressurized cabin somehow, some way. I don't know. But other, other than that, it's all theory and we're all just taking guesses. So once again, another thread you can check out on the RCG website. Uh, we have new trucks, man. So many new things coming out of Horizon. Of course, they merged. Uh, they brought in Hobbico, and that is really influenced how much they are dropping now as far as new products go. Uh, a new HK Heli. And Jason, have we, we've talked about this. I think we've talked about the B900. I don't know if the review was out the last time we had a podcast, but the review is out now if you haven't seen it. Yeah, it was. it came out on the 16th, so it probably hasn't been seen before but it is out you can see the video you can see my photos my thoughts on this airplane it's a blast everybody talks about it uh he brought it out at the polar bear picnic i believe and everyone turned around to attention as soon as it took to the sky definitely sounds good 120 mile an hour looks good very cool and then more and more what do we have? The E-Flight Extra 3D. I don't even know if we've talked about any of this stuff. We talked. We showed your chair, so that your chair, chair yeah, that would be up and out. Right, and then this uh, right here. I had a guy email me and say, Jim, why do you never talk about companies just randomly? And here's a DJI story right here for that guy. Uh, and then we have a story about Joe. Uh, Joe, of course, is the CEO, a former CEO of Horizon Hobby, who passed away, I believe, at the age of 61 or two. And we have uh, his history here, and then everyone's talking about him. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this. My story with Joe is that I was at the in a Horizon event at Eli Field, and a guy walks up, and I'm talking to David Payne, and I said, hey, I think I know you. He goes, oh, yeah? And I said, yeah, aren't you a writer for a magazine? He said, no, my name is Joe. And then when he walked <laughs> off, I didn't put it in here because I didn't want to put David in a story with yeah, him. Yeah. But David goes, dude, that was the CEO of Horizon. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, he's a pretty nice guy. <laughs> so news and news for days. Uh, and it's uh, January. So that's pretty good stuff. Yeah, look at those. Look at those seats right there. Yeah, what, what have I been looking at? <laughs> so this is the seat I wound up going with. It came with buckets uh, like this, but I, I don't. I think I told my wife, I was like, Isaac, I would keep the buckets. But well, I know you want, to get, you want to try to get three people in there. Yeah, so like if I go to Grammy and Paul's, I actually got one slightly better than this, but well, we don't be showing prices. Um, but I, I would. I, I needed something so I could bring two other people with me to like uh, the family dinner, you know? So should yeah, we get, I get it. should we go look at that? So here's what I wound up with. Yeah, baby. 1964 C10. Um, and it, like I say, this guy, Dallas, it took him a year to build it. And it's a frame off restoration, every nut and bolt. I'm not kidding you, Jason. I was, by the way, I ordered actuators to make the door locks lock automatically yep. on a key yep. palm. When I you took the ask, door panel. Well, guess what? What? There's no door lock in the, there's no pop lock in this truck. Oh, I took the really? door off. I was, there is yep. a, <laughs> where is it? There's not one at all. I was like, well, I guess this won't take as long. How do, how do you lock or unlock it from the inside? You lock it on the door. And then I don't know how to lock it on the end. They say you can lock it with the handles. Okay. So I'm actually Googling that right now. It's a whole different <laughs> animal. The, uh, the Chrome custom piece right here is original to the truck. These would be the wheels that I would buy if I were buying wheels. So I saw this thing and I thought it's like he custom made it. This is for you. Corvette Torch Red, which is as red as red can get. He's lowered it slightly, but not too much now. So I don't uh, know if any of these stories have ever been told on the podcast, but you know, if you start riding the shows with Jim, you're going to hear some stories. Yeah, yeah I'm like, I, I need to experience that now, and and now we have the truck to do it in. 
I got to tell you that it's so nice that I've yet to even smoke the tires off of it. Yeah, I, that's, that was one of the first things I asked you, but you, you spun the tires yet? I still haven't done it, really. <laughs> oh, what happened? Uh, okay, that's not what I meant to happen. That's somebody else's truck. Okay, uh, I hit that forward button. So this is the interior, all new gauges. I Even the lighter worked. Couldn't believe it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in such good shape. It's got vintage uh, air AC. Uh, it's got a tilt wheel, power steering, four wheel disc brakes, and all the glass is new. It's got electric window. So, Jason, the handles are still there, but to make it go up, you just push the handle up and down. Uh -huh. I got a switch coming in that'll allow me to roll down the passenger window. That was not in there. There's my buckets, and uh, it's so nice. And I can make it quiet, but if I throttle it, it will sound like a dragster. Mm, nice. So this is the motor. This is the other big reason I bought this. It has a uh, 5.3 Vortec, which is an LS motor. The Vortex is a steel uh, motor for SUVs. And it's got the high flow intake and the high flow exhaust. And it took us, it had one tank of gas through it. We got in it and drove eight hours back to Nashville. Nice. And I've been driving it ever since. Oh, I got to hear this. So he said, Boone says, Jim T is about to find out why they've been cowboy hats up on the side of the rim. <laughs> is it because yeah. you'd hit the side of the truck? I don't know. I, I wondered about that. Can I wear my hat in this truck? And I uh, was wearing my felt in here the other day. So I'm sure it'll work. There are a lot of things here, though, that I'm working on. Like, how do I lock the hood? Because you can't right now. And uh, uh -huh. Um, there's well, dude, that is almost ex as exciting as the Timber X, I gotta tell you, right? <laughs> and, and it only costs $249. So, so there's all that three to a truck, he says, about the hats. So that's funny. Oh, three to a truck, gotcha. Okay, so here's the driving video, which you probably don't want to watch. Uh, the one thing that you can't see in here, so there's my heat and air and all that stuff, is the bedwood. The bedwood is stained like uh. A, bl a, a dark blackish instead of brown. It's more of a charcoal color, which is also something I said mm -hmm. I would do if I had a truck. Well, I know you've been taking pictures and videos and stuff. I need to come out and, and shoot it with the drone so you can have some drone footage of the truck too. Yeah, and today it was actually sunny, so that yeah. was good. But she, uh, she did 70 miles an hour at 2,000 RPM all the way home. It's almost like driving a go-kart. I'm curious to see what my bench seat feels like when I get that in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, buddy. I can't wait to get a ride. Yeah. And then I've got the topper. I've got a hard fiberglass Tonio locking cover for the back to protect my wood and then also allow Jason and I to maybe take this thing to Joe Nall. There's no reason it wouldn't do it. And uh, is, it, we'll see if you fit in there. But, Jason, you can't take your shoes off, your socks off, and put it on my dashboard. Oh, man. That's over. All right. I'm driving myself, dadgummit. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Okay, so we've gone over the news. We've talked about highlights. We've talked about the weather. Hey, guess um, what I'm doing tonight? Yeah, hit me. Oh, I know. It's, it's RC related. It is. I'm going tiny whip racing. At the local uh, hobby store. Local hobby stores, $5 Thursday nights at 6 o'clock. You should come. Bring your very nice. Bring your Dutrix. Come on. Bring the truck. Bring your Dutrix. It's north of town. It's probably not that far for you. Huh. Let's meet up there. Let's do it. I'm calling you out. I want to race you mm. right now. Well, after the podcast, let's talk about where it's at. All right. I am bound for 2019 to uh, do more things externally. Yeah. We did miss. I was going to uh, hit you up to go see Bob. Or not Bob, but they had the thing for Bob at yeah, uh, Tony's or IHOP yeah. somewhere. But I thought, man, I don't think we can just leave work and go over there. So I didn't feel comfortable doing that. But. Yeah. All right, y'all. Well, this is all the news that is fit to be read about radio control this week. I'm Jim T. Graham with Jason Culver, your host. RCGroups.com is where you'll find us on a daily basis. And uh, we're just trying to keep it right. Still uh, fighting the server, uh, beating it into submission. Although I'd have to say less things are happening now than usual, as in uh, keeping things flowing and rolling. And I want to thank all our live listeners and all of our listeners. I believe this will become an audio podcast. So I'll start whipping that up. Today's Thursday. It'll probably be next week sometime. And Jason, any parting words? Uh, stay warm. Hang in there. Good spirits. Don't get depressed. Spring is coming, baby. Also, uh, I'm rewatching um, 
woke up this morning, the Sopranos, for the okay. 20, 20th anniversary is coming up. So uh, oh, wow. if you get if you get bored in the uh, wintertime, you can go do that. All right, y'all. It's the RC Groups Podcast. Be sure to uh, hit subscribe if you have not. Hit the like button because the more you hit the like button, the more people – I don't know what happens really. It's a magical thing in the YouTube world. You hit the like button and then magic things happen. Pretty sure. Yeah, it's good luck for the year, I think. That's right. If you hit the like button, you'll get good luck for uh, one week, and then next Thursday you can hit the good luck button again. That is brilliant, Jason. Oh yeah. All right, I'm out of here, and uh, we appreciate y'all. RC Group Psycho. Peace out. Sabadama.